Yeah. Okay, war coming to America. Um, for those of you who don't take this serious, I want you to know that Jesus himself prophesied of a time when war would be all around us. And um, wars and rumors excuse me, wars and rumors of wars. Matthew 24, 1, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, See not all these things? For I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. I need to remind you that the Bible also says in another place when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction will come. Now, um, because some people will try to say, there's some scholars, a friend of mine at work, he went to school for a couple of years. I'm not sure exactly how long he went. He didn't graduate, but he went to school, college for a couple of years um, to be a to be a minister. And man, we just had so much disagreement on all of his points of view. It could be why he never finished his school because he just couldn't understand what he was reading. But this is to the whole world. The Bible refers this to being to the children of Abraham. Well, folks, listen to me. There was a time of prophecy that said the children of Abraham would cover the world. Right now they do. And right now this is to the children of Abraham. Okay? This is not talking about a particular place on the planet like, like my friend believed that only Israel only these hard times are coming to Israel. I know, I know it's time to be afraid, I know, but these hard things are coming unless we are ready for, the, for these things that are coming. Many are going to be devastated. Many are going to be devastated. There may be places where won't feel any wrath or backlash or anything like that. Um, just like there were in the Civil War, there weren't two. There were there were places in the United States that hardly knew that they that we were in a war at all. You know because of the diminished technology. But today, but today, men's hearts are going to fail them for fear for the things they see coming on this world. Just like the Lord says here. Now to to continue reading, verse three. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. These things are coming. Take heed that no man deceive you. These things are coming. They're coming to every man on the face of this planet eventually. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And people are doing that today. They're coming and saying they're Christ, and they're coming and saying they are of Christ. And there's more hypocrites and false prophets walking the face of the earth today. And, and you know why I say that? Because folks like Joel Osteen, I talk about him a lot, but he's the icon. He's just the icon. Uh, come and say that they are of Christ, and they're not of Christ at all. They don't say the things Christ said. They don't confront the things that Christ confronted. They don't walk in the way that Christ walked. And, and they don't lead you to the place that Christ is leading us. They are not. <laughs> they are false Christ. Do you hear me? They are false Christ. Verse 6. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nation shall rise against nation, 
and kingdom against king kingdom. Okay, you hear that? No. Wars and rumors of wars, and then it will happen, Jesus says. Nation shall rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom, meaning that one city will rise up against another city. That was a kingdom. Well, a kingdom in the old days, it was like a, a castle in the middle, and people of the, that particular land served the, the guy who owned everything. In particular, in those days, who was the smartest and knew how to run things, and he was politically inclined to the situations around him, so he ran things. And whether they had a lot of money or not, he ran things until somebody else came in and took them over. And of course, they had a lot of walls around their city and back in those days. And some cities were uh, hard to overcome. One that comes to my mind is Jericho, where, where Joshua defeated with the help of God. And this is what he's talking about now, right here. City rising up against city. <coughs> and then today, uh, our society today, Detroit City. One of the most corrupt places on the face of the planet today. And you go a little farther south and you're gonna um, you're gonna find some cities who are who are uh, godly cities whose things are based on um, like some of the cities in, in Indiana or some of them that are um, in, in Virginia now. Um, there is a lot of places that are getting to be more godly than ever. Uh, if you go down to uh, uh, like Branson, Missouri now that's a city who is very inclined to godly things, you know. So, uh, and, and, and God's going to defend that city just like with Jerusalem. God is going to defend that city because his name is on it. Branson, Missouri, God's name is on that city. Okay, and the reason I'm bringing all this up is because I want people to be aware of it. The Lord spoke to me about it last night. He spoke to me about a time of war in the United States that it's going to be like a way of life, a way of life, a way of fighting. Now, we're only into the place of the war of words right now where just like with John Brown we're only getting to the place you know we're just with the place of the war of words when John Brown took that one more step he took that one more step and he, him and 18 other men they went down to a, a place in Virginia uh, and they killed a bunch of uh, people who held slaves and um, they were unaware that anybody was coming, you know. And those men were caught and executed, of course. But that was the first blow in the in the Civil War. And I want to tell you something. John Brown did it wrong. John Brown did it wrong. The first blow, seemingly like the first blow in the in the in a war, is always done in a wrong fashion. Pearl Harbor, for instance, you know, and ungodly things. And when God's people rise up and defend themselves, then it becomes harder. I think maybe the Civil War was drug out in such a hard fashion because of the wrong... Now, what John Brown was saying was correct, but what he did was wrong. He should not have taken the situation into his own hand. He used the phrase, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. He used that phrase that he could justify going to a town and killing other people. Now there's a lot of things just like that, a lot of hard issues today going on the same way. They're going on the same way, doing the same thing that they did back in uh, um, right before the Civil War started in the mid-1800s and these men are, are hard against one another, unwilling to listen unwilling to compromise, unwilling to take a look at what God has to say about it, even though they both declare themselves to be Christian. And in this dream last night there was people running around shooting with fully automatic weapons, killing and shooting and things going on that you would see in a, in a war zone. 
um, and and this one fellow came in after you know we had fought the battle and we won and after this fellow came in and he was a stranger and I walked up to him and I said to him declare who you are declare who you are you know something we could get away from a lot of troubles if we would just if some common sense people in our government would uh, write a law that says people have to declare fully who they all are and what their intention is and that would be, that would pretty much alleviate um, you know and, and would that stop men from lying no but they would not only have to declare but to prove what they were saying is true okay and and uh, th there is another um, fellow here I want you to take a close look at William Branham America being destroyed he, he was a prophet he lived um, uh, from 1933 uh, or he made some uh, prophecies in 1933. In June of 1933 is when he made these prophecies. And I, uh, William Branham died in the 1940s, if I'm not mistaken. He died in the 1940s, not too long after World War II. Uh, but among the prophecies, he made seven major prophecies. Okay? And the, and the first one was... Uh, he prophesied the invasion of Europe. Okay? And the second one was um, Adolf Hitler. The world into a second war, into a second world war. Okay? He prophesied that war. And uh, the third one was fascism and Nazism were swallowed up in co into communism. Okay, he, he prophesied about that. The fourth one, scientific achievement. A driverless vehicle while cars continued to be shaped more and more like an egg. <laughs> Don't even need to say anything about that. The fifth vision dealt with the morality of America and the world, just as scientific achievement was represented by a car in the fourth vision, the decline of morality was represented by the women in the fifth vision. William Brenham saw women cutting their hair, acting and dressing like men. Boy, did he get that one right. The sixth uh, vision, a woman rose in, in a, this originally, uh, in his original statement, says a beautiful woman rose to power in America. Now, some people believe that to be Hillary, but not, <laughs> unless you've got something there that I haven't seen, it, it's not Hillary, okay? Um, I believe this to be Sarah Palin, okay? She is the only one even close enough to to fit that description of William Brennan's prophecy. Okay, and his last prophecy was the doom of America. He saw, and, and these aren't written out exactly, but it's the way that it says it uh, um, is really close and expresses exactly almost what he was trying to say. The seventh one and final vision, there was an explosion and the nation of America was turned into ashes from coast to coast. Okay. Now this could be, this could be the Yellowstone eruption. It could be. It could be that. Um, this could be um, a civil war. Um, this could be, like some have said, this could be um, uh, Russia invading us with nuclear weapons uh, but if you go back and you look at it in the um, in the original statement it's talking closer to um, a civil war 
fire set in America and things being um, uh, destroyed by the the hands of the very men that held it sacred before. You know, when the devil gets in you, man, there's just no place that it won't take you. And 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 excuse me, that's what I'm saying is that. Um, is that unless people come together with a common sense, here is millions of people, 325 million people, of whom 80% declare that they are that they know one God, and they can't come up with laws to govern the country so that it will so that peace will happen. Well, the reason for that is because the Bible tells us in Psalms 917, the nation that forgets God. See the, will be turned into destruction. The problem with America is half the people have forgotten who they are. Well, I'd say more than half. <laughs> I bet you out of the 80% of those people who declare themselves godly, of, you know, of those 80% of, of people who declare themselves godly, um, I bet you 70% um, out of those don't even attend church regularly. And most of them have no idea what God expects out of them. Most of them don't know that God wants us to be holy. They have no idea. Probably a hundred million people in this country who call themselves Christian vote for abortion. They vote for abortion, for, for case for any cause, abortion. I mean saying that, well, if you want to, it's your kid. No, it's not your kid. One of the hardest things I was taught by God when my children, my teenage children were growing up, slapped me in the face real hard, is that those children don't belong to me. Those children belong to God. Eventually, every parent learns that, learns that little scenario. They learn that. And God is very concerned. This could happen, folks. This could happen. War. We could be facing a war, a civil war in America. It starts with words. I've never seen so many words talk about fighting and destruction. I was talking to a young lady on Facebook the other day, and and uh, she's declaring to be Christian, but she's talking. She was for abortion. She was for Hillary, and and she was um, this, and she was cuss, cussing at me. She freely cussed at me the way she felt. Talked vulgar about me and the, the, the way she felt and and I would answer her back in the in the fashion that would cause her to wake up and and smell the roses so to speak um, declaring to her God's word along the way and at the end at the end she began to be won over she began to be won over I don't think you'll ever see a war between or another argument between me and that lady because she was introduced to who the real God of heaven is. Preachers, every person that dies in this country, you will be held accountable. Every person that dies in this country through this cause of your lax preaching, of your only wanting to build bigger, of your only wanting to build better, of your only wanting to make uh, a religious establishment, you will stand before God for it. Join me next time for another great message right here across in the middle ministry. <coughs>